you have two choices if things are not selling for you. One is to quit and two is to strip things back to the bare bones and start over. I am going with option two. So I am making this video from my car because I am a homeschool mom and I am running here, there and everywhere with my kids and so I really felt it was important to make this video and it's just gonna have to be in the car because I can't seem to get back to a place at home where I can sit and record this, um, but I really wanted to get it out. Now, I'm making this video about things not selling. I, I made a video, the last one I put out said, you know, thrifting is dead was the, th the, the thumbnail, but the reason I'm making this video is because it's affecting me, and if it's affecting me, then I know it's affecting some of you. Some of the comments that I got on that video were like, well, I'm doing great, which is fantastic. You're doing something right. There are some of us though that have been kind of stuck in maybe the a rut of doing what we've always done and not taking the time to step back and say, whoa, 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 this isn't working anymore and we've got to do something to fix that. So that's what this is about today is the solution. Well, what do we do now? So we can talk about the why this is happening all day long, but that's not gonna help us actually come up with a solution to fix the problem. It's good to know, like if you think that this is happening because there's a recession, it's good to know like, okay, I think it's happening because of a recession. Then what are people buying during a recession? So that, it's helpful in that way, but just to focus on why it's happening is not uh, going to help you fix the problem. So yeah, maybe it's a recession. Maybe it's just people aren't buying the same kind of stuff anymore. Well then great let's where do we go from here so here's my plan and if your plan is different or if you want to add something to it leave a comment for sure so the first thing that I'm gonna be doing with my moving forward is that I'm gonna get myself back into a beginner's mindset when I first started reselling I knew nothing so I was excited about everything I was open I was eager to everything I wanted to go out and like see what everybody else was picking up what's selling for them and I was willing to try all kinds of new things so especially if you've been doing this for a really long time, try to get yourself back into that beginner's mindset where you are open to new concepts, new ideas, and doing things in a new and different way. The second thing that I am doing differently to start over is that I am going to be thrifting and garage selling very differently than I have before. I'm not going to be going straight to the sections that I'm comfortable with, which is like knickknacks and mugs and things like that. I am starting in an entirely different area of the thrift store every time and I'm saving the areas that I'm used to till the very end. So in the next few videos that you're going to see with me that I, where I'm out thrifting, garage sailing, you're going to see me going straight to the electronics, straight to the sporting goods, straight to the, and then working my way around to kitchenware and wood and metal items and things like that because I'm trying to force myself to start looking at things in a different way. The third thing, the third thing that I'm going to be doing in order to get myself back to the bare bones and starting again is that I'm going to take things really, really slow. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to look at everything. I'm going to look to make sure there's no flaws because even as somebody who's been doing this a long time, I start getting complacent, picking things up and not noticing, hey, you know, it's missing something. Oh, there's a chip. So taking that back down to the very, very beginning. The fourth thing that I'm going to be doing in my starting over is that I'm going to be scanning and looking up everything. I'm going to be doing this like it's my last dime that I'm spending. I want to make sure that the items that I'm picking up are going to be something that are going to sell quickly, things that are selling very well. And so I'm going to be very, very, very picky about what I pick up. In the next few thrifting videos that I'm putting out, I will be showing exactly how I'm deciding whether or not I'm picking something up based on looking at the eBay app, solds, and things like that. So the next thing I am doing to start over is that I'm going to be setting very strict parameters on myself for what I am allowed to pick up. So there are three things I'm focusing on buying. One is things that are going to have a big return on investment. And this is something that might be something that's over time, but I'm talking about, and you would have to set this for yourself, whether it's something that, okay, I don't mind holding on to this for six months as long as I get $50 profit, or at least I'm going to get $100 profit off of it. Something that's a big ticket item that maybe might take longer to sell, but you know you're going to get a, a lot of profit for it, say, a Le Creuset pot that might take a little longer to sell, but you know you're gonna get 50 bucks profit. 
then the thing I'm not going to be doing is picking up smaller items that are only going to bring five, 10, 15, 20, Twenty dollars, and and not know like having being a longer tail item, and not knowing like oh it's gonna sell fast. So if it's gonna be something that's a smaller profit, I want it to sell quick. Another thing that I will for sure still be picking up are things that are lots or bundles that are going to maybe sell over time, some more quickly, some more slowly, but are gonna bring in profit all along the way. I'm talking about like the comic book lot that we got where we spent $60 and we got about, I don't know, two to 300 comic books. The, the buttons that I got, I spent $25 and I got about 500 buttons. And so they've been selling consistently over time. The next thing I'm for sure going to be picking up are things that are quick flips, things that I'll pick up and just like it sounds, they're going to sell quickly. And some of them may be more locally. I mean, we, we picked up some things this weekend and we flipped them very quickly on Facebook marketplace. So things that are going to bring in profit now. And then the only other thing that I'll probably still allow myself to pick up is something that I call a catch and release, something that I'm going to be using for myself or my family for a while, and then I'll turn around and sell it. So things like that. I probably won't be picking up little like tchotchkes and figurines unless it fits that, that model. Quick flips, high return on investment, lots and bundles. If I can get a lot of them and it's small, a small price that I'm going to make money over time, things like that. But, but little ticket items, I have lots of that already. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having items that are going to be long tail, but I already have so much of that in my inventory that I don't need to pick up anything else like that. And just allowing myself, allowing yourself to walk away empty handed. I went to the thrift store the other day and I walked out with one item. That's almost unheard of for me. Uh, then we were like, well, let's, let's go hit another one. Maybe we'll find something there. Again, that one, I walked out with one item, but you know what it did? It made it a lot easier for me to list. I came home, took those pictures, listed those items right away, and we were good to go. I got a lot of comments on the last video I did, the one I mentioned where the, the thumbnail was thrifting is dead that a lot of people are in the same boat as I am, that they, they're they finding that the things that they have been picking up and selling aren't selling like they used to. And again, it might be the recession, might be that people just aren't picking up the same types of things anymore. So I want to set the example of, well, okay, let's put our money where our mouth is and start thrifting more strategically for things that are going to sell. So if you haven't, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button because the next few videos that I put out are going to be walking you through step-by-step step exactly what I'm doing to turn my eBay business around. This is important to me because this is part of my livelihood. Maybe you're doing this to supplement your income. Maybe you're really wanting to be a full-time reseller. Taking a hard look at how you're thrifting, how you're reselling, how you're conducting your business is really important if you're trying to do this full time to supplement your income. You've got to look at it as a business. If you're doing this as a hobby, great. Just continue to pick up the things you like, make the money you can when you can. But if you're really wanting to be serious about this, you've got to constantly be focusing on your business and readjusting when things aren't working. I'm going to link a playlist here sharing my recent sales, October, November. I'm working on my December video right now. And YouTube is sharing a video here that they think that you would like. And make sure you have subscribed so you don't miss those videos that I'm putting out showing step by step following my process of turning my eBay business around and making money like I need to. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.